Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning routine. It is Tuesday morning, November the 7th, 2017, episode number 212. So glad that you are here this morning. I hope that your Monday was exceptional. I hope you got everything done that you wanted to get done on Monday and you got off to a great start of the week. I hope that yesterday's uh, article on team, on whether you're part of a dysfunctional team or a good team, I hope that maybe somehow that helped you during your day as you looked around you at your family and the things you're involved in to see if you were part of a good team and if not, how you could rectify that situation because there's nothing worse than having to be part of a bad team day in and day out. And so we might as well try to correct it, right? So I hope your Monday was a great great day. We're on to Tuesday. I woke up this morning and the sun was shining. It was bright pink clouds out there. And they've changed now, otherwise I would share it with you. But it was absolutely gorgeous this morning outside the window. And we are on to a new day. So yesterday, I'm telling you, I am still messed up by this hour change. It's the weirdest thing, man. Yesterday it was, boy, what time was it? I think it was about 10 to 6. And I'm like, I, I feel like it's 9 o'clock at night, like 10 to 6. I want to go to bed, but you know, you got to force yourself to stay up. So I don't know. I didn't last very long, but that's okay. I slept good last night. So uh, let's see here. I have a shower thought for you this morning from my favorite newsletter, The Hustle. Here you go. No matter how many lasagnas you stack on top of each other, Ultimately, it's always just one lasagna. True, right? It just gets taller. It doesn't change. It's a true, a true, true story right there. So, but uh, very good. Well, I've got some stories here for you uh, lined up this morning. Let's jump right into it here. This article here, very interesting. You know, there's so many. One of the things that I love sharing is how times are changing. And, you know, some of us are like, uh, oh man, I wish things wouldn't change so rapidly. And some of us embrace change and are like, that's amazing, you know? And I love things that are happening that change the way we've always done them because the way we've always done them was necessary, wasn't necessarily the correct way to do it. So here is an article on another thing that is changing in our life for the better. So the title of the article is How Warby Parker, which is a uh, eyeglass company, right, reinvented the eye test. One advantage of Warby Parker having a direct relationship with customers is that we get feedback and can move very quickly, which is very good. Most eyeglasses companies don't have direct feedback from their customers, right? They've told us that it's inconvenient and annoying to get a new prescription to get a new pair of glasses. Absolutely, it's inconvenient and annoying. First, you have to call and make an appointment at an eye doctor. Then you got to wait until your time has come to go. If you have an eye doctor, that's a good one. They got a book schedule. Then you got to take leave work or whatever it is to go down and get your eyes done. Then you got to stand there and feel uncomfortable that you're not buying your eyeglasses from your eye doctor because you know that's where they want you to buy them and you're asking for a script to go elsewhere. The whole thing is just un inconvenient and annoying. They're absolutely right. So what did they do? Well, let's read on. Optometrists see 59% of their revenue from selling glasses, so they're highly incentivized not to let a customer walk out the door with a prescription to be filled by Warby Parker. Meanwhile, 110 million Americans get an annual eye exam at an average of $50 a test. That's a $5 billion market. The app, called Prescription Check, breaks down the process of getting your eyes done into four steps. And this is Warby Parker's solution to what it is that we don't like and the inconvenience of giving, getting an eye test. Prescription Check is the name of the app that they now own. This takes approximately 20 minutes. The test, which requires a computer, a credit card, and 12 foot of space in addition to an iPhone, evaluates such things as astigmatism, a refractive error to, uh, to determine a prescription, which is then checked by a local doctor. Prescription check is currently live uh, in the states where Warby Parker's largest audience is to test. New York, California, Texas, Massachusetts, Colorado, and Washington. So it is not ready yet in Pennsylvania and most states, but it's coming. The test costs 40 bucks. Uh, Rose reports 80% of those people buy glasses from Warby Parker. And that is smart business right there. Why go to the doctor? Get your eyes checked right on your iPhone or your computer right in your house and have your prescription filled without ever having to uh, go to the doctor. I love it. Brilliance. So uh, great article. Next article that I have for you. This guy's 
you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save that one for last. I'm going to skip over. Here's one. 12 incredibly useful things you didn't know that Google Maps did. Now, you're going to know some of these, seriously. But these are 12 great things that Google... I use Google Maps over Waze or all the other ones all the time. These are awesome. Number one, go completely hands-free. If you have an Android phone, you can go hands-free. You can actually talk to Google Maps and say, okay, Google, what road is this? What's my next turn? What's my ETA? Things like that. And it will tell you exactly what you want to know. Isn't that awesome? Number two, remember where you parked. Tap the little blue dot that's on your screen and it, it will remember your current location. It'll pull up a hidden menu with some handy options, including the ability to save your current parking location. So if you can't, if you always forget where you parked, you can use the blue dot on your Google Maps to remember and mark it. Uh, number three, share your location even as you move. Open up your maps on your phone, tap the blue dot just like in the for the parking thing and hit the, uh, the option to share your location. You'll be able to set an end time for the location sharing or opt to keep it active until you manually turn it off. That's kind of cool too. You can have your kids, if they're going to go on a trip, they can turn that on until they get there so that you can make sure that they get there safely. You know that whole thing, right? Why aren't they answering the phone? Why aren't they texting? Well, because they're driving. Yes, but I'm worried about them. How do I know when they get there? How do I know when they don't get there? Well, just turn on the little thing and then you can see when they get there or not, right? I don't know. Number four, search along your route while navigating. This is awesome. You can hit the one touch button for gas stations, restaurants, grocery stores. I do this all the time when you're driving down the road and we're going south and I'm looking for the, the nearest cookout. Favorite restaurant, love it. I'll just boom, search cookout and it'll tell me where they are and go right to it. Number five, find out what's near anything. Restaurants near here, bookstore near here, same thing. Number six, explore at eye level. That's the street view option which is amazing. We shared that lady who was having a, uh, a art show, well, not a, a photography show in New York City by taking pictures of unique pictures on Street View. Uh, that's fantastic. And uh, so I'm sure that you guys all know how to use that. If you don't, drag the little yellow guy, whatever his name is, put it on a street and boom, Street View right there. Number seven, go back in time. This is very cool. I never knew this existed until a couple months ago. You have to do it on your desktop computer. If you go to Google Maps, you can go to a location and then uh, you drop your uh, pegman there and there's an option of when to see. You can see now, a year ago, 10 years ago, as far back, and you can see how it changed over the years. It's absolutely amazing. Very, very cool. Number eight, uh, you can beam a map directly to your phone or to your car. That's if you have the you have to have the right kind of car though. So check your car to see if it's uh, able for that. Number nine, see time specific traffic estimations. This also is very good. You need to do it on your desktop computer as well, if I recall. You can do your route and then go to the day and time that you're anticipating to do that travel, and it will tell you what your travel time is based on the averages of traffic during that time of day. Absolutely very cool for planning a trip ahead of time. Uh, number 10, add extra uh, destinations to your directions. So if you want to go from here to there to there, you're able to do that. 11, measure the distance between two multiple uh, two points, which is awesome. And number 12, save time with advanced gestures. That's all the double swipe, triple swipe, single swipe. I can't remember them. You know, it's like using the smart keys on your keyboard. I can never remember them. That's the problem. So, but Google Maps, very powerful. A lot of cool things. Article, of course, will be in the show links if you want to read it more and know more about it. But so the last article I want to share with you guys, this article is close to home for me. And it's, it's a really, it's an interesting article. I don't get upset about it, but it's, I don't know. I guess it has a lot of stuff mixed into it. So the title of the article, and I'm not going to share the whole thing, just parts of it, so it'll be in the shillings, is what kind of society do you want to live in inside the country where Down syndrome is disappearing? Okay, so here we go. With the Before I go any further, for those who don't know me and my family, I have to preface this so you know my point of view, okay? My oldest son, Zachary, which is one of the most amazing guys, went to the football game last week, all that stuff. He was born with Down syndrome. So, you have to know that before we go into this article so that you can understand my point of view of things that I might say ahead of time, in case you didn't know this. All right. With the rise of prenatal screening tests across Europe and the United States, the number of babies born with Down syndrome has significantly decreased. 
but few countries have come as close to eradicating Down syndrome births as Iceland. Since prenatal screening tests were introduced in Iceland in the early 2000s, the vast majority of women, close to 100%, who received a positive test for Down syndrome, terminated their pregnancy. Okay. The United States has an estimated termination rate for Down syndrome of 67%, and France is 77%, Denmark, Denmark, excuse me, 98%. The law in Iceland permits abortion after 16 weeks of the fetus has a deformity, and Down syndrome is included in this category. With a population of around 330,000, Iceland has on average just one or two children born with Down syndrome per year sometimes after their parents received inaccurate test results. In the U.S., according to National Down Syndrome, about 6,000 babies with Down Syndrome born each year. So there's much more to this article here. And the question, I like the title of the article, is what kind of society do you want to live in? And that's intriguing. Uh, this is, I, I don't know. So here's my point of view. And this is why I wanted to, you know, just to make sure you knew where I was coming from on this article. So... I totally understand the thoughts that go through somebody's head if they take a, have a test done and they find out that there's a great chance that their child might be born with Down syndrome. I totally understand the thoughts. There's fear. There's, am I able to do that? How, what will life be? How hard is this? When you have no idea, you all, your fears rise to the top a lot of times, right? Um, another great fear, I don't want to have my child to have to live their life with a disability their whole life. I understand all of these thoughts. I really do. So part of what's happening here, okay, I understand the thought behind it, okay? That said, all I can tell you is this. I can't even imagine how the country of Iceland and these other countries will be significantly changed over the course of time by not getting to experience the joy and the gift of having some children with Down syndrome in their community. I mean, and, and that's a blanket statement. That's probably not a fair statement. But all I could tell you is this. I could tell you, let's use my Zachary, okay? My Zachary has changed our lives forever since the day he was born. And not in a negative way. Having a child with Down syndrome has blessed us. In so many ways, there's so many times that I look at him and say, he gets it and I am lost. They love like no other tomorrow. They accept they accept everybody unconditionally and you are their friend. I don't do that. I mean, I have a lot to learn from my son. And, and I've got to tell you, society, our circle has been changed in a positive direction by having our Zachary in our lives and in our family and in our community. And, and imagine a country that doesn't have that point of view teaching those lessons. And uh, so anyways, that's a lot to spend on one article. I apologize, but it is a point of view of mine. I don't often share a point of view, but I'm telling you, if, if, they, are, if they, are, they are losing out, that's the point. They are losing out. So what a gift we have. But all right, so on we go, guys. Trends, the top 10 most searched things yesterday on Google. Top of the list was Snapchat. Snapchat was out. I heard my daughter say yesterday something about sending a picture to somebody because Snapchat was out. Wow. How about that? Suffers outage for at least four hours. Snapchat was down yesterday. Number two, Green Bay Packers. Number three, Meek Mill. Number four, Rand Paul. Number five, Veterans Day 2017. Number six, what is Pad Thai? Number seven, the Lakers. Number eight, Luke Bryan. Number nine, Isabella, Isabel Granada. Number 10, Veterans Day. Veterans Day ranked twice. So uh, good stuff, man. Uh, and on we go. Let's see what's trending on the news today, guys. Top of the list, United States Air Force. Air Force failed to flag Texas shooter. You know, I don't know. Whatever. He was dishonorably discharged. Is that not flagging anybody? He couldn't buy a gun. Was that not being flagged? I mean, I don't know. Now people are just throwing darts. So uh, next, Cartage Page. Cartage Page, I wanted Trump in Russia. Next, iOS 11. Apple iPhone's iGlitch is driving textures crazy. Uh, next, temporary protected status. U.S. to end protected status for Nicaraguan immigrants in 2019. 
Then we have TJX Companies. TJ Maxx's parent company continues to pay workers of Puerto Rico stores shuttered by the store. That's pretty honorable. Well done. Next, we have Xfinity. Comcast Internet service was out across the U.S. on Monday for several hours. That must be connected to the Snapchat outage, I would imagine. Uh, then we have the Committee on Ways and Means. Facing pockets of dissent, Republicans begin revising U.S. tax bill. Okay? And then, let's see here. Next, we have Meek Mill. Meek Mill sentenced to two to four years in prison for violating uh, probation. I don't even know who Meek Mill is. So, But that's the trending news for today, guys. Let's move on over to a passage of wisdom for today. Today's passage of wisdom I picked here, um, it's a gut check for all of us. And this is going to be an easy one to blow right past and say, yeah, 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 uh-huh, yep, everything is good. I challenge us, though, all, and including myself, I've already been thinking about this since I was reading this. I'm like, you know, I'm going to share that, that I have to really dig in today and pay attention to myself very closely and just to, to reevaluate myself. And I challenge us all with this passage to reevaluate ourselves closely. So the passage is Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 and 35. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So the question is, what fruit are you bearing? And based on that, you can look and see, are you pulling good or bad out of what you're storing up in you? What are you storing up inside of you? Are you storing up, uh, you know, greed and lust and, uh, and pride or uh, jealousy or unforgiveness? Are you storing some of these things up in there very, very slowly where you, you don't even notice it? You know, it's not always so obvious that you're like, oh, this is what sometimes it's very tricky and sneaky. Uh, and, you know, is that what's storing up or are you storing up things that are good in you like peace, love, grace, forgiveness, encouragement, all these things that are blessings and show the light of the God that uh, that we follow. You what is, what is it that you're storing up? Because that will have an effect on the fruit that you show and the fruit that you show is easy when it's going easy. The question is, is under stress, in a bad situation, when somebody wrongs you, whatever it is, what comes out then? That might be a good indicator of what you're storing up. So good gut check for us all today. I challenge us all to spend a minute and just, uh, maybe actually more than a minute, and just watch our day today and see what creeps out at certain moments and why that is. And maybe we can uh, become even better by looking at that. So let's pray, guys, and let's get this day started. Father, good morning. Father, we thank you for today, this Tuesday, this Tuesday in November. Father, we thank you for the passage that you've given us today. A mile marker for us to look at and do a gut check and see what fruit truly we are bearing. What is it that people see? What is the fruit that we're, we're, we're producing that people see that we're unaware of that we're even doing? What is it that we're storing up inside that we're like, oh, that's okay. I don't, I'm not going to forgive that person or, or uh, I feel, uh, I, I, I feel uh, prideful in this situation. Or, or what is it that we're storing up that then comes out when we, when we don't even know it? Help us today to spot those and give us the strength to correct whatever it is that needs correcting in our lives. Father, I thank you for our families. I thank you for the relationships that you have put into our life. Again, Father, give us the strength to be positive and a great person in the relationships that we are in, that we continually show a light onto other people of the grace and love that you have, and that we are the hands and feet of your love as we serve other people day in and day out. Help us find what our purpose in life is. Help us find who it is that we're here for as that will give us purpose and direction as we go through our days. Father, we love you and we thank you. Amen. And that, my friends, is a wrap.
So thank you for being here today on Tuesday in the morning routine. I hope that you have a wonderful Tuesday. And tomorrow, hump day, we will be back here once again in the morning. I can't wait to see you. Until then, don't forget that today, you, yes, you, have the ability to be exactly who you were meant to be. I love you guys. Have a great day.